the Torridonian Hills of Northwest Scotland. Made of sandstones a billion years old, lying unconformable on their Louisian basement. We're up here in northwest Scotland. The Torridon group strata are in grey on the red and green Louisian. And the most dramatic geology is here to the north of Loch Marie. Seen in this simplified map, the unconformity contains the most dramatic protrozoic landscape in Europe and maybe the world. In an earlier video, I used this area to explore how field sketching can capture and interpret geology seen on a modern hillside to show a billion year old Paleo Valley. Remarkably, there's been no significant research on these rocks and the ancient landscapes in this area, that's west and north of Slioch, since the original mapping by the Geological Survey back at the end of the 19th century. So a visit is long overdue, but it involves a bit of an expedition. It takes several hours to walk into this roadless area from the more accessible parts of the Moyne Thrust Belt that I know quite well. The path leads towards Loch Marie under the Thrust Belt rocks. So up there is the uh, mountain Slough, and our mission lies up in that direction, not in the mine thrust belt. Let's keep going. These are some of the hillsides we sketched in the previous video. So that is the bottom of the main Paleo Valley. Our mission is to go and try and trace this round around the base of Sliok and beyond. Over the ridge we enter Letter U, part of the Fisherfield wilderness of Wester Ross. Well it's a bit of a walk up here, established camp down the bottom of the valley here and we've come over to this side of Sliok to try and map out some Paleo landscapes a billion years old, upon which were deposited the Torridonian strata that forms the rather spectacular hill of Slio. Right, so let's get mapping and see what we can find in this really wonderful landscape. So these are pretty typical Applecross formation, Torridonian sandstones, big trough cross bedding. Mostly a sort of a coarse to very coarse sand with occasional layers of uh, cross bedded granules. This is the main fluvial system of the Applecross Formation. So, the edifice of Slioch, a hill that reaches up to 981 metres above sea level. It's a thick stack of sandstones. The sands were deposited by major rivers that flowed through this landscape, lying 
on top of Lewisian basement's early Proterozoic gneisses. So let's look at the geological map created by the survey, summarising their work in the 1880s and 1890s. The Torridonian Applecross rocks are here, but there are also breccias that lie northwest of Slioch. The Pelia Valley we sketched once before, but it looks from the map that there's more up here. Understanding this and how the breccias fit into the story is our mission. So, pretty classic lumpy Louisian ground there. But as we come back to the shady hill of Slioch there, you can see the lower part of the quarry just beyond the loch there. It's got those benches and that's bedded Torridonian strata coming up and onlapping the Louisian. We're on the side of a Paleo Valley. It's actually running down like this into the mountain. Let's map it out and see what its form is. So let's just sketch it up, shall we? Let's get my notebook out, get going. Okay, so here we go. Here's the mountain of Slioch with its uh, horizontally bedded, uh, very thick uh, Torridonian strata in here. But I'm more interested in what's going on down the bottom. Because over here on the right, we've got crags of Lewisian basement. And here's the Torridonian. And the Torridonian is gently dipping uh, from the top. Uh, from top right down to bottom left here. But the boundary is dipping more steeply and comes down the hillside something like this. So the Torridonian strata are essentially onlapping a paleo high represented by these outcrops of Lewisian over here. So essentially from with respect to the Torridonian we've got the flank to a valley that basically gradually fills up and there's completely swamped by the Torridonian strata that make the mountain edifice of Slio. Really nice flank to a Paleo Valley. Okay, well let's, I'll just tidy the sketch up, um, add some spot heights uh, for a scale, and uh, then we'll move on to look at somewhere else. So we're beginning to reveal part of the ancient landscape, a valley side. We'll check this out more carefully later on. But let's check out those breccias. These dotty patterns, and there's a patch just here. Well, I'm walking along on the uh, opposite side from the payload channel we just sketched in, just to check out, well, this stuff over here. Aha! Well, these look pretty dramatic, don't they? Let's get a closer look. So these are pretty spectacular. Look at these. Got a whole series of wretches. Really amazing, look at this. So, so the Torridonian here are wretches, and they're sat in the little Paleo Valley. Let's see, let's see if we can track it out. Well, the rocks up there, well they're Lewisian, sitting like this. If we trace them round, we can see as we come round in here, we start picking up where that black streak is, and these crags in here, where my hand's running across, those are all Torridonian, Torridonian breccias again. And as we come back past this bit here to where the gray rocks are, that's Lewisian. So we've just done a little tour across a really narrow little amphitheater cored by Torridonian. Well, we can actually do a little bit more than that. So let's just look at this ground in here. This is our Torridonian slice again. Okay, and as we go on to the higher ground up in here, this higher ground, 
that lies at the head of this modern corrie, well, that's Louisian. So we've got a bowl in here that's containing the Torridonian strata. So Paleo Valley that's just hanging in here, it's almost mimicked by the modern landscape. So let's go to the edge of the amphitheatre and look at the unconformity itself. So this material here, these are amphibolites, the Lewis basement. But as we come up through here, those rocks just up above this water course, well, those are breccias. Let's look at those. And we can see that they're very large blocks of amphibolite. But in fact, as we come down, we can see that those blocks essentially jigsaw together and then become the intact Lewisian. Or actually, it's the other way around, of course. The intact Lewisian breaking up and that's a regolith, the soil profile that then eventually leads up into the more mobile, moved fragments that make the basal breccia of the Torridonian here. OK, I'm just going to walk up into the, well, a few steps up this hillside. See if we can see the back end of this Paleo Valley. Well, I've walked up the line of the Paleo Valley, which coincides with the modern stream. This stuff I'm just sat down on here is the Louisian amphibolitic substrate. But this is valley fill, not modern valley fill, but Proterozoic valley fill. It's part of the Torridonian. Let's it back up here and have a look at it. It's really spectacular. A jumble of amphibolite blocks now all cemented together. So these breccias I'm walking up here lie in a very narrow, a tight little valley, rather like the modern hillside that we're in at the moment. Large blocks of the immediate substrate. But if we look back across the loch over there, we can see that this little valley, the cut-in valley, feeds into the broad valley we mapped out earlier on the other side of the loch. So this is one of the feeders into the big Paleo Valley we can map over there on Sliach. Really remarkable that we can get this kind of detail out of a Proterozoic landscape. Let's trace out this feeder valley system and see what happens to the Torridonian breccias. So we can trace the very narrow ravine that was up there in the stream section, the modern stream. It comes down, opens out into a floor of these breccias. So we have an idea that the narrow valley opens out, spreading its detritus out into the broader valley floor. So I've come down a few hundred metres below the narrow ravine. Take a look at the breaches here. So let's have a look at what we've got in this face here. So, pretty dramatic large block of vein quartz. That's fine, that's part of the main uh, amphibolite basement that we've got here. But actually, if we look between the clusts of the amphibolite and the occasional bit of quartz vein, well, we can see that there's another component in here. 
it's perhaps not quite so easy to see when there's so many amphibolite class in here, but let's just zoom in into here. And we can see that there's a very coarse sand matrix that lies around the blocks of amphibolite. So although there's a lot of large rafts of amphibolite, the local basement to the Torridonian here, that are coming into these drainage systems, there's also other class types that are flooding down the Paleo Valleys. So we can perhaps think of a world of flash floods pouring down ravines, carrying blocks and a coarse grit sandy matrix, essentially debris flows flushing out of these uh, Paleo Valleys, building out into a broader valley downslope. Again, rather like the form of the modern landscape. So much for these breaches. Let's look at another example. And this one has a different suite of Louisian as its immediate basement, including these sheared TTG gneisses and metasediments. So here are these next breccias, bounded to the northeast by amphibolites and to the southwest by the TTG gneisses. Now let's check out the breccias themselves. So we've got another basal Torridonian breccia here, rather similar in first appearance to what we've seen so far, except this time, let's check the class out. Okay, so the class of amphibolite and vein quartz, but also more granitic type material, more sort of TTG gneisses and so forth in here. So quite a variety of class types even if we look down in here, some of the more variegated potential metasedimentary material. So a whole variety of class types within this breccia. Yeah. As reflects the variation in the immediate substrate here, the different units within the Lewisian basement. So the class in the basal breccia here, no great surprise really, reflect the composition of the underlying basement that's being eroded off in this very rugged paleo landscape. So the outcrop pattern of the breccias forms a tongue, the flat ground here with amphibolitic basement behind forming the high ground and in the foreground here the TTG gneisses. The class in the breccia are a mixture of these two basement terrains. Big angular blocks. So I followed the uh Breccia down the Peleo Valley, down the modern valley, and what do we see? These class are much more rounded, much more processed than the angular blocks we saw further up the Peleo Valley. These blocks have been processed as they've been transported down the Peleo Valley. And we're picking up, well, some gritty fragments as well, finer grain material, not that fine, but still finer grain than the big blocks that are being picked up as you move out down the Paleo Valley.
So the breccias on the map represent feeders into the main Torridonian outcrop just across Loch Garveg. But there are more breccias over there too, on the flanks of the Big Paleo Valley. So the high ground up there is the Louisian basement, various nice types over on this side of the Paleo Valley. And here we've got an apron of breccia and the class in it match those up on that hillside. So the flank of the big Paleo Valley here has got breccias sourced from the valley sides. Okay, let's see what's happening simply out in the main channel axis or at least towards it as we go down this paleo flank this way so i've followed this apron of breccia off this flank of the paleo valley and as we come down here we get these grittier intervals, which are distinctly bed layers. So we get the idea here that we've got these debrites that are being reworked. And we've got these fluvial sands that are washing over the top of them. Still got uh, cross bedding in these preserved. Another debrite coming down, eroding down. So little packages of debris flow, little reworking to the top of our debris flow fan here uh, by fluvial processes. So really nice preservation of the uh, processes operating on the flank of our Paleo Valley. Okay, let's continue on round on our tour. Okay, so I'm just continuing the tour down through here, looking at the material as we come off the flank. And here's a, another really nice outcrop. Let's just take a look at this one. Well, this material, well, we're dealing with quite a lot of these coarse sands, very coarse sand grits coming in with the pebbly beds between. And we can see that the uh, sands are in trophy shapes. They've got crude cross bedding, almost certainly some kind of broad braid plane type setting we've got here. Okay, let's continue our exploration. So as we walk up here, we're moving higher in the succession. And that's gonna take us further away from the side of the Paleo Valley through time. So we predict that it should just get sandier and sandier and less brecciated, less evidence of the debris flows coming off the flank as we go higher up. Let's see if that's the case. So, yeah. this is actually a pretty well sorted coarse sandstone. Really just the occasional pebble floating around in it. So our forecast was right as we moved up into the Paleo Valley, which is away from the flanks. We're getting away from the evidence of sources of material coming off the flank of the Paleo Valley into the main thoroughfare or throughput route for the sandstones that are going to make up the apple cross formation and that is what makes the mountain of Slior.
So it isn't just a simple transition up into a world of sandstone. There are times when the flanks are shedding material into the main valley bottom, even once the sand is established. And we can see that here with these debrites, still interbedded with the sandstones. So some really nice outcrops here as we move higher up in the succession. Still seeing gravels and you know, large fragments that have been shed off the flanks of the Palo Valley, but are being reworked, presumably on a braid plane, so we get these uh, thinner sands and winnowed out debrites, leaving the odd clast uh, sprinkled out along the little braid channels. So a big braid plane in the main Palo Valley occasional debrites coming in at the flanks winnowed away you can imagine the debrites flooding off the flank then being winnowed out by flows rivers washing down the main axis of the paleo valley leaving a few isolated blocks otherwise depositing these sands and uh, grits uh, in the beds you can see behind me so we can reconstruct the processes really nicely here So much for this western flank of our inferred Paleo Valley, which, seen from this viewpoint, would run into the hillside opposite, beneath the mountain massif of Slioch. But at the head of the loch, there's a ridge of Louisian amphibolite that separates Loch Garveg from the much larger Loch Enfada beyond. On the map, the amphibolites are green, and around the hill of Mail Dive, the Torridonian Applecross formation climbs over from Lochen to Loch. So it's back to the outcrops. So the Torridonian here really is a pretty coarse grit. This is fairly classic for the apple cross formation. So a pretty gritty formation. We're really close here to the unconformity, just a, maybe 15 meters above it. It's just below me on the hillside. So those gray rocks down there are the amphibolites. We just pan across this little crag here that overlooks it. Well, that's the first few beds of the apple cross formation. So these here are the amphibolites of the Louisian. As we come across here, well, there's just a tiny veneer of basal breccia. And then you can see behind me in the crags are the grits of the apple cross formation. So a really nice unconformity section just here. Apple cross formation sandstones then drape over the hill of Louisian amphibolites. But as we pass over the ridge and back into our main Paleo Valley, the fasces change. So as we come away from the Paleo Hill in towards the main valley axis, well, the fasces is finer grain, isn't it? Still see bedding nicely, but actually it's a reasonable sand. It's not gritty at all. Different fasces then in the main valley axis. Now let's try to put all this together. First of all, across the main Paleo Valley. So 
So this is our usual view. Looking broadly east-southeast across Loch Garveg. And there's over 650 metres of visible relief here, though we're mostly concerned with the lowest 250 metres. We can draw in the geology, the retaining Louisian, simply shown here in the same colour. On the right hand side here there's a side valley with an apron of breccias which have been shed out and reworked as part of the braided stream deposits. And the residual paleo valley is filled and eventually overtopped by the apple cross formation fluvial sandstones. So the paleo valley we knew about before our expedition links through to the one we've examined here with ancient rivers that once flowed through like this. We trace sediment shed from narrow ravines, those coarse blocks swept out in debris flows, leaving deposits to be reworked by fluvial processes on braid plains. And these were eventually swamped by fluvial sandstones flushed in from way beyond this local area to build up the thick succession of apple cross formation on the mountain of Slioch and indeed the other Torridonian hills of northwest Scotland. So let's reconstruct our paleo landscape. The simple geological map with topographic contours could be used to construct structure contours on the unconformity that reveal a deep valley running beneath modern Slioch. And this shows the basal deposits, breccias in those little confined valleys in the northeast and marginal side valleys, braided streams in the main valley floor. All swamped by fluvial sands of the Apple Cross, initially confined to the valley, but eventually flooding out and overtopping it. The younger parts preserved on Slia and burying the main valley below. What a story. So finishing up here on these breaches is a good place to finish the video. Up in the hanging valleys that fed initially these large blocks of substrate down into the Paleo Valley down there, the broad one that runs out through Sioch. Fantastic. Proterozoic, one billion year old landscape features preserved here, watched over by the mountain of Slioch.